Anatomy of a paintbrush. Bristles of the paintbrush is known as the head. The very tip is referred to as the tip, whereas the widest part is the belly. Then this, the metal tube part is called the ferrule. And then at the end of the ferrule, you have the crimp, where it's actually attached to the handle. Now the handle usually has the type of paintbrush as well as the size of the paintbrush on it. And you'll note that there are all types of handles from wood to plastic. So what's the difference between long and short handled paintbrushes? Really, you can feel free to use whichever you prefer. Typically, long handled paintbrushes are designed for painting on an easel or upright where you're a little bit further away from your artwork. Short handled paintbrushes tend to be a little bit better for if you're working on a desk and you're kind of over top of your paper or just when you want to be closer to your artwork. Um, I tend to think it's a little bit easier for details, but I use both. Natural bristles are typically made of some type of animal hair, but um, oftentimes you'll find they're better for oil paints, whereas synthetic brushes, which are ma made from man-made materials, tend to be better for water-based paints. A flat brush has a square end with medium to long hairs. It comes in all different sizes and could have a long handle or a short handle, but it's good for bold strokes, washes, whether that's watercolor or acrylic, filling wide spaces or big areas like backgrounds. I've used it for impasto if I didn't have a palette knife on hand. It could also be used if you turn it slightly on its edge for fine lines, straight edges, stripes, all that kind of stuff. So a flat brush is a staple for every artist. An angular flat or shader, as it's sometimes referred to, is basically a flat brush with angled edges. So it's still good for filling in large areas and wide spaces, but because of that angle, you're able to get some smaller uh, details and lines and cleaner edges as well. I'm actually gonna go ahead and label these two to keep them all separate. So this is a flat and this is an angular flat. And again, an angular flat can also be referred to as a shader. So next up we have a round. Um, again, like all these brushes, they come in different sizes, long handle, short handle, and Rounds are really good for details. Some of the bigger rounds are good for textures in a background, um, details in the middle or foreground, really whatever you want to do with it. But you're going to find that you're going to have a lot more control with a round and getting in those smaller details than you would with, say, just a flat paintbrush. A bright is a flat paintbrush with edges curved inward at the tip, typically has shorter hairs. It's good for controlled strokes, um, I think thick and heavier color. It, it's better for working up close rather than holding the brush at a distance from the canvas, say if you were working on an easel. Um, but these brushes too, you're gonna find, as I've mentioned before, with all these other styles, will come in a long handle or short handle, so that can help you to using a long handled on an easel. Then we have the filbert. So the filbert is flat and oval shaped kind of at the end with medium to long hair. Skin comes in all different sizes. It's really good for blending, soft round edges. I like the filbert. It's probably my favorite paintbrush because of the shape. It's good for large areas as well as details. So the fan brush is good for a variety of things. I think natural hairs, uh, because they're softer, tend to be better for smoothing, blending, feathering, whereas the synthetic hairs are better for more textural effects like clouds, leaves on trees, things like that. I 
I also have plenty of paintbrushes that don't fall into these categories, whether they're from like house paint or I have a ceramics paintbrush that the blue brush here is a mixed media paintbrush for just different textures. So honestly, I think the best thing you can do with paintbrushes is experiment and play around, see what they're capable of doing. Try mixing a little water in with the brush versus applying it thicker, see what textures you can make, see which brushes are best for smoothing, and just have fun with it. Thanks for watching! Don't forget to like this video and subscribe so you don't miss any future acrylic painting tutorials.